segment now. Let's talk about what's trending. A popular change.org petition is gaining a lot of steam online. Organizers are calling for a stimulus check every month until the pandemic is over. 2.5 million people over that number has signed this petition and the person who wrote it out basically said they want a monthly check, $2,000 per doll every month, and then $1,000 per child every month. Now here's a look at that stimulus uh, uh, petition that is gaining that steam. Again, over 2.5 million people signing it, and the person who organized it all... Families in Colorado are still feeling the economic impacts of the crisis, no doubt about that. Combined with the rising cost of living in the state, experts have said that providing direct payments is one of the most impactful ways to support families. Colorado cash back checks are hitting mailboxes now, and the cash back payments currently being mailed were made possible through an amendment to the state's Taxpayer Bill of Rights, which requires the Colorado government to return excess state revenue. And normally those revenues are returned in the form of a temporary reduction in the state income tax, or a sales tax refund, or reimbursement to counties for the senior homestead exemption. For the current fiscal year only, legislators approved a direct payment to taxpayers as a way to refund excess revenues. They also accelerated the timeline for issuing those refunds. In an official statement to the Department of Revenue Persons Bed, the Department of Revenue spokesperson said the Colorado cashback rebates are an early refund of the fiscal year surplus. The program will provide immediate relief to Coloradans by sending checks this summer instead of spring. So, people in Colorado should expect to receive a lot of money, and this can help so many people. According to a new plan announced by lawmakers, the California gas tax rebate has morphed into inflation relief checks for millions of people. An agreement on the framework for the 2023 budget was reached and includes 23 million Californians, direct payments at as much as 10 hundred bucks. The payments will be issued via direct deposit or debit cards. The deal also suspends the state's diesel tax for 12 months starting on October 1st, and the diesel sales tax is currently 23 cents a gallon. Governor Newsom's original plan was to tie the payments directly to vehicle registrations. Under that plan, California vehicle owners would have received $400 per vehicle registered in their names, up to two vehicles per person, and millions of dollars and more in grants to make public transit free for three months. Now pause a part of the diesel sales tax for a year and pause the inflationary adjustment to gas and steel and diesel excise tax rates. The Speaker of the State Assembly said that any plan to pause or eliminate the sales gas tax will put funding to maintain roads at risk. The Republican Party of Los Angeles County has also sent a statement the Republicans have been requesting a gas holiday for quite some time. We remain hopeful that legislators will finally take action. The new framework will give $17 billion in inflation relief back to Californians. According to the governor's office, joint fathers who make less than 150k and have at least one child will receive the maximum above $1,000. That's a lot of money. Under this new plan, single fathers who make under $75,000 will receive $350. And those making between $75,000 and $125,000 will get $250. Californians making between $125,000 and $250,000 will also see a bonus of $250. And joint fathers making over one hundred fifty dollars or less will receive $700. Now, the Post, Washington Post, has said that Joe Biden is considering sending out more cards to millions of drivers. The idea was to send out preloaded cards to recipients, but in practice, there will be no way to control what people spent the money on. That would essentially mean that the payments were just another stimulus check. Democrats were desperately needed the vote of Joe Manchin of West Virginia to get their signature legislatively priority across the finish, so they did so with Washington does best and they reached a deal. To help land support on the bill held by advocates groups as the biggest investment ever in, ever in curbing climate change. Really, that benefits working people, low income people, there is an uproar. Oh my God, you're helping young people. You're helping working people, you're helping poor people. What a terrible thing to do. But there is massive silence when you give gigantic tax breaks to the 1% or large corporations who are now doing phenomenally well. So if my colleague from Florida is interested in the transfer of wealth, let's work together. Let's make sure that the working class of this country, not just the billionaires, get a fair shake. Let's help young people. Let's start canceling the student debt that we should have done years ago. We have a ton of big news about the fourth stimulus check, social security benefits, SSI and SDI payments. Continue watching this video to never miss out on this. It has been confirmed that there are still billions of dollars in stimulus money available by Americans this year. 
lawmakers in Congress are urging that allied people, that everybody apply to receive additional crisis aid from these relief payments. Anywhere between $500 and $1,500 will hit most residents of New Mexico's bank accounts over the next five months. The free money from the state government comes after New Mexico lawmakers passed two separate economic aid packages this year amid record oil revenues and rising cost of living, including high gas prices. The special session's House Bill 2 lays out either $500 or $100 payments, $1,000 payments for New Mexico residents that will be split into two parts. How much you will get, though, depends on your tax filing status. And heads of households, surviving spouses, married individuals filing joint returns will receive a total of about $1,000. Individual filers and married individuals filing taxes separately will get a total of $500. Again, folks, those payments will be split into two parts. The first payment is supposed to come as soon as possible. The legislation formally outlines its delivery as no later than June 30th, 2022. Folks, joint filers will receive $500 for the first payment, single filers will receive $250 for the first payment, and the second payment of the two-part rebate will come sometime in the month of August. As with the first payment, how much you get depends on filing status. Joint filers will get $500 and individual filers will get $250. State lawmakers decide to include any income limits in House Bill 2, meaning the state will provide cash payouts to people regardless of how much money they make. If you don't make enough money to file taxes, you can still get some cash from the state. House Bill 2 provides a so-called relief payment to fill in the gaps. There is also an application process and a limited amount of cash that the government will send out. Relief payments for non-tax filers are on a first-come, first-served basis, and they will only last until a $20 million fund is exhausted. Applicants will be required to give a social security number or individual identification number to the state for approval of identification. The relief payment folks will be the same size as a two-part rebate. $1,000 will go to households of married couples or single individuals with one or more dependents. For households of single individuals without dependents, the payment is $500. To get a relief payment, if you meet the requirements, you have to fill out an application and the department is planning on announcing the application process within the next few weeks. Back to fundamentals, which is you know, great companies, but profitable growth. There's got to be a way to get to profitability and cash flow, something that Carl has been focused on all the time. And so for the most part, we're seeing uh, our portfolio is holding up very well. Uh, our first quarter, we're seeing uh, real resilience in our portfolio. And uh, our platform continues to pivot and look for opportunities. So I view this as a healthy correction. Clear Clearly, it's going to take time to play out, but these types of corrections create opportunities as well. They do, I, and no real concerns. I mean, listen, it's not as though we haven't seen headwinds, but this is a, a somewhat an, a unique moment here yes. with the Fed. I mean, the balance sheet at nine trillion coming down, the, the, ready to raise rates dramatically for what may be an extended period of time. Um, inflation at all-time highs, supply chain problems, war in Ukraine, right. China locked down. I don't know. There's a there's a lot of cross currents. There's a lot right going on. Yeah, we have to be mindful of all those issues. Clearly, we're being very thoughtful, mindful as we're navigating through this environment. But let me just give you a um, a snapshot of at least what we're seeing through our portfolio companies. Please. It might it might be helpful. Um, as of the first quarter, uh, our companies, by and large, growth was still pretty strong and margins were still expanding. So there is more resilience in this economy than perhaps people give credit for. Now, clearly, all these issues are going on, and clearly we're going to have to keep working with our companies through. But, but these types of um, uh, conditions are also creating opportunity because of the trends that are being set up for the future. Things like energy transition, the heightened state of volatility, clearly the decoupling uh, and, and, and the regionalization that's going on in the world. So, so I take a step back and with my leadership team continually think about how do we position Carlisle? Where are we going to try to find opportunities that play into those types of things? Right. I want to talk to you a bit about that repositioning sure. you mentioned in terms of credit. But to stay on PE for a moment, sure. I mean, does a, an, an environment like this uh, prevent exits that otherwise might have happened? Uh, do funds just basically stay there for longer? Is that something your investor base has got to get accustomed to? Yeah, I think m and activity when these types of uh, disruptions and corrections start happening, both buyers and sellers, they take a pause. I think you saw that in the first quarter, six to eight week period of time when both buyers and sellers took a pause to recalibrate valuations. But I think as confidence comes back. And Lewis and I thank you, Madam Chair, for convening this timely hearing. Electrifying the postal service fleet is an urgent priority for environmental justice communities, including those in St. Louis. Um, 
we have a unique opportunity to reduce tailpipe emissions and decrease cumulative pollution burdens that disproportionately harm Black, Brown, and Indigenous communities on the front lines of the climate crisis. The Postal Service's current procurement plan to continue buying gasoline vehicles is in direct conflict with the agency's policy to, quote, emphasize environmental issues and alternatives and protect, restore, and enhance the quality of the human uh, environment, end quote. It is also not in line with the policy to, quote, use the NEPA process to assess reasonable environmental alternatives to propose actions in order to avoid or minimize adverse effects, end quote. I am extremely troubled by the Next Generation Delivery Vehicle Proposed Plan, which doubles down on decades of pollution. Ms. Stevens, is it correct that the Postal Service refused to explore specific environmental justice mitigation options in an expanded environmental impact statement? Uh, the, I would say that the environmental impact statement supplement that was requested was not justified. Part of that process demands the introduction of new information that was not considered as part of the formal draft or final environmental impact assessment process. There were no substantive issues brought forward through that process that had not previously been addressed, uh, considered, introduced, or addressed in the Postal Service's final environmental impact statement. It just didn't rise to the level that is required to consider a supplemental EIS. Okay, so the fact that I was quoting the Postal Service's response to the EPA comments in the NGDV final environmental impact statement. It's my pleasure to call today's hearing to order on the nomination of the Honorable Christy Goldsmith Romero, Kristen Johnson, Summer Mersinger and Caroline Pham to serve as commissioners of the Commodities Futures Trading Commission. Welcome to the nominees, and I have to say, to begin, I can't think of a better way to start Women's History Month, but celebrating these uh, strong, competent women. It's a pleasure to have all of you here today and to have your families with you. The CFTC has gone far too long without its full complement of commissioners. Today's hearing for two Democrats and two Republicans is an important step toward getting this financial watchdog back to its full capacity. It's critical that we confirm these nominees without delay. The invasion of Ukraine has led to price volatility in wheat, 